Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's good to be here. And it's a wonderful day to be alive, alert, and well. The sun is shining more and it's warm out there. I'm so excited. I love this time of year. I even sat outside a, few, a bit this week um, when it wasn't raining, but the sun's been out and it's been glorious. Even though I've heard that the first storm is, is um, out there forming and they've named it, who cares? It's still a beautiful day and hurricane season they keep talking about every time you look. Who cares? It's a wonderful day and we'll get through it. As my Tato says, and this too shall pass, we will get through whatever storm is, is coming our way because we've been through so many storms already and we know what to do. And also, this is a shout out for Bermuda Day. It's on Monday. We're finally having our half marathon race this year after being canceled due to COVID last year. Yay! I'll get out there and, and watch the runners go by. And I um, say to everyone, enjoy, be safe, and praise God for moving forward. I wanted to explore this title and this too shall pass because I've said it so many times since I've started doing these podcasts and um, it's a wonderful quote and we'll explore it more because I know we as awesome children of God, we have the power to overcome, to transform and to co-create the perfect outcome for our lives and for, for our world as we inspire and give hope to all. And that's what we do when we move through things to a greater awareness and a uh, more powerful, as our theme is for this month, more powerful um, recognition of who we are in this world today and knowing that we can do anything. I also chose that picture. It was interesting trying to find a, a photo that would suit what I'm trying to talk about today. And I saw those tunnels. And I said, ah, oh, that's great. It's about going through the tunnels of life, either from darkness to light or light to darkness. And I would say to always choose darkness to light. We've gone through the darkness and, and through our mental um, spirits, through our health and all these different things through this pandemic. Now we're more so in the light. So use those tunnels as a figment of, the, of our um, imagination to say we can pass through. This too shall pass. So I'm going to lead into our daily word, faith with perfect ties in as usual. And the affirmation today is my faith keeps me focused on God. Let's say that together. My faith keeps me focused on God. And the reading says, I may not be able to control what happens around me, but I am always free to choose what happens within me. My perception determines my experience. I begin with faith. I choose to see the vibrant wholeness that is present even during illness. I open my heart and mind to the harmony that I know is possible even in the midst of apparent discord. When my needs appear greater than my resources, I remind myself all supply springs forth from the inexhaustible well of divine substance. I am reassured by remembering all situations are temporary and God is greater than every circumstance. Through my faith, I align my thoughts with the divine and believe in this truth that sets me free. Mm, love this. And the verse for today's daily word is from Luke 17, 6. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. So let's take these thoughts into our prayer and our opening prayer today. Take a deep breath in as we give thanks to God this day and every day for the wonderful blessings we have received as we move through this pandemic, 
through the blessings of a ceasefire in Gaza and parts of the world that are warring, through all the demonstrations, all the things that are going on in the world, it will continue as we bring forth a new normal, a better one that's for all of us to share the wealth, the happiness, and the joy of life. For we know surely the presence of God is in this place right now and his power and his grace surrounds each and every one of us as we move forward through this pandemic, knowing that this is all passing. And by next year, we claim and we know it to be, we'll be through this pandemic in a place where we can embrace and enjoy life more fully than ever before. And so we thank God for his blessing. And as we continue to bless the doctors and nurses and caregivers all over the world who are taking care of family members and those who are still sick and shut in. And we truly send blessings to India and all those areas that are still struggling um, to get through the numbers of deaths and those people sick with um, COVID during this time. We send healing light to you and we give thanks for Bermuda to get to this place where we are now where one day we have zero um, positive results and maybe four, but the number's in the single digits and there are very few people in the hospital now. So we give thanks, God, as we move forward and know that with God all things are possible. And we have the strength and the power of God to move through all things. We can move a mountain. We can move a mountain salt, mount, um, mustard seed just by commanding it. This is the power that we have and we give thanks for that power, for our good health, for coming through to the light of God that is always present within us as it shines forth from within us. And we give thanks as we greet and meet and embrace. We give thanks as we step out into the world more fully. We give thanks for surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. So we say thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Ah, I'm going to share a new song today. It's called There Is. I want you to listen to it closer. I love this song. I've had it for a while and never shared it. But listen to this one. When I close my eyes Cause it's already there, it's already shared in spirit. When I choose to clear my mind of all the weight of outside, and one becomes all collective and tall between us. strength in numbers, there is faith that answers, if we make our voices heard by ourselves, we will find there is love, there is joy, there is peace, there's a When I quiet all my doubts, the truth of life comes out. Cause it's already there, it's already shared in the oneness. Cause 
always love and faith and hope as we work together as one that's what this song's bringing to us remind us of that we have choices every step of the way this too shall pass we are getting into a new phase a new normal and we have the power when we get quiet and release any doubt to find the truth in a better way in a new way to move forward from where we are right now we have the strength in numbers as we have collectively worked for the healing to go through the tunnels of darkness into the light and we've made noise and let our voices be heard through this pandemic through black lives matter to releasing hate crimes and and stopping a whole lot of things that have been going on for a long time we have raised our voices for we know this time we will get to the true light of God, the one that we have envisioned, the one that we truly want, where we're all treated as one, all equal and, and divine in God. Through all our ethnicities and faiths and colors and, and beliefs, we come together as one. And this is revealed and know that there is. So this theme this month of power, this song teaches about our power to overcome because we have control of our thoughts that will get us through, that has got many of us through. Yes, people have been depressed and the people have been down because it has been a long journey in that darkness of that tunnel. If you were sitting in it for many of us. And now it's time to rise out in the light of masks are coming on, pe off, people are getting vaccinated. Yes, there are still voices being heard in the negative and the positive, but this is how our world comes forth. For we have the power of God within each of us to change our world, change our thoughts, to more positive, more uplifting, to get us to be healed and stronger and more exalted in our ideas to create the world that we want. We are the power of God in action. That's what this time, and, and I think of a lot of times of this pandemic, and I was blessed during this pandemic, and there I know a lot of people um, didn't have jobs and or have done all thoughts, got sick, lost family members, and I have lost a family member, not from COVID, but um, as I've said, my sister. But we've all gotten stronger in different ways as we've come through this dark period into the light. And with this power of our mind, we just know that we're going to rise up. That we will get the job that we desire. That 
we will keep our home, that these evictions won't put us on the street. We know that um, through God, all things are possible and this too shall pass. The rough points are still coming through, but we will get through it. James 1 verses 2 to 3 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So we shall persevere and get through it and keep going, keep going. Do what needs to be done to care for one another so that we don't have another spike, so that we can keep the numbers going down lower and lower and lower so that we can shine that light and say yes yes we stand here now fully in the light knowing that this too has passed well interesting enough if i don't know if you know that the phrase this too shall and this too shall pass is not in the bible and you know, I always saw this in fire because you hear all the ministers and people always quote it all the time. It's actually a Jewish phrase. It comes from a Jewish wisdom folk tale involving King Solomon and silver rings and engraving commonly engraved, sorry, common engravings on silver rings. Did you know that? The, and this too shall pass. The version of the story I'm going to share was recorded by Hida Jason. Um, sorry, it was a version told by David Franco from Turkey. He used the Hida Jason recording. And um, is the Israel folklore. And so I'm going to share it with you today. And please excuse me, I practice these words. They are Jewish words um, so that I can say them correctly. So. Um, bear with me. And here's the folklore. One day Solomon decided to humble Benaiah ben Yeshiva, his most trusted minister. He said to him, Benaiah, there's a certain ring that I want you to bring to me. I wish to wear it for the sukkah, uh, which, gives, which gives you six months to find it. Now the sukkah, I found out, is commonly called the Festival of Tabernacles, or in some translations, the Festival of Shelters, and also known as the Festival of Ingathering, and is a biblical Jewish holiday celebrated on the 15th day of the seventh month, which is September. So he's asking him to go find this certain ring to wear at this festival, and it's given him six months and he said to him, if it exists anywhere on, and sorry, but boy, I'm having problems speaking today. Please excuse me. It says, if it exists anywhere on earth, your magistry, replied Benaiah, I will find it and bring it to you. But what makes this ring so special? It is magic powers, answered the king. If a happy man looks at it, he becomes sad. And if a sad man looks at it, he becomes happy. Solomon knew that there was no such ring existed in the world, but he wished to give his minister a little taste of humility. Spring passed and then summer, and still Benai had no idea where he could find this ring. On the night before Sukha, he decided to take a walk in one of the poorest quarters of Jerusalem. He passed by a merchant who had begun to set out the day's wear on a shabby carpet. Have you by any chance heard of a magic ring that makes the happy wearer forget, forget his joy and the broken-hearted wearer forget his sorrows? said Benaiah. He watched the grandfather take a plain gold ring from his carpet and engrave something on it. When Benaiah read the words on the ring, his face broke out in a wide, wide smile. That night, the entire city welcomed in the holiday of Sukkah with great festivity. Well, my friend, said Solomon, have you found what I sent you after? Oh, the ministers laughed and Solomon himself smiled. 
To everyone's surprise, Benaiah held up a small gold ring and declared, It is here, your majesty. As soon as Solomon read the inscription, the smile vanished from his face. The jeweler had written three Hebrew letters on the gold band. Now these, bear with me, Jamal, Zayin, Ya, which began the words Yem, Zen, Yava. This too shall pass. At that moment, Solomon realized that all his wisdoms and fabulous wealth and tremendous power were but fleeting things. For one day, he would be nothing but dust. So put this story in the context of this pandemic that has been through our lives and most of his work from home since March, since last year, early part of last year. And actually, it started sooner. But think about all this in context with this story. No, we didn't send someone out to find a ring that we knew wasn't there. But the last part of it is the realization that all that wealth and, and wisdom that you think you have is but fleeting. For at some point in life, you'll be nothing but death. I'm dust. This brought to mind losing my sister this year from cancer or sudden. But for all of us, many of us who are so worried about their jobs and their homes and, and all of these things had stopped to realize that this will pass and we'll either move forward or we won't get there. But we have to stop and take a breath and think about all the wonderful things that we are as children of God and the simple things in life that are ours, family, friends, and even though we couldn't touch them or be in contact with them, this pandemic has shown us that we've reached out to family more and because we don't know because of this pandemic, if we were going to get it, if we were going to be here tomorrow, if we were going to get sick, if we were going to lose them. So we reached out even more than we ever did before. One, we had the time because we weren't running all the time for some of us to jogs backwards and forwards. We had time to rebuild our families and be in contact more. And I speak to more people and they said, now they're going to do it more often because they can go on Zoom and on the internet and see their family members for wherever they are. Because we don't know how much time we have on earth as Solomon understood. So take the time, this too shall pass, and remember that in these moments, we have to see them all as precious moments in our lives. Precious times to hold on, to see the light of God in each moment, in each day, in each breath, because we don't know what the next one is. And I'm not trying to make this moment, but I want us to open our hearts and our minds from depression. Oh my God, I don't have a job. To know that there is so much more important in life. The who that you are in God. Your family members. And, and what you should be looking forward to more is being able to hug a friend, a neighbor, a mother, a father, and all those people that you weren't able to do before. So look at your life and be thankful for the simplest and the smallest things. Have faith. Keep your prayers going and know that God is in the midst of it. Another thing about this quote was used by Abraham Lincoln. And it's another way of explaining this, this too shall pass. And Abraham Lincoln used it in his address before the Wisconsin State Agriculture Society in Milwaukee, Miss Wisconsin on September 30th, 1859. And this is what he said. And by the successful and the unsuccessful, let it be remembered that while Caucasians like the present bring their sober and durable benefits, the exaltations and mortification of them are but temporary, that the victor shall not be vanquished 
if he relax in his exertion, and that the vanquished this year may be the victor the next, in spite of all competition. Now, I don't know the history of it. I don't want to get into it, but my interpretation of that is talking about agricultural times in 1959. And we know about the times of agriculture. Some years you have a great crop and some years you don't. But what he's trying to say is sometimes you may not win that competition of having the best crop or having enough crop, but you always have the next year because this too shall pass. Now this is another saying is to not say that you could die, but you have another chance. And that's what we have, another chance to live a new normal that is more uplifting and more loving and more caring. That even though we're tired of what we're going through, we're tired of mass, we're tired of not being able to just go down the street and go in a store and hug our friends and our family. Know that the victor is us when we keep on keeping on and knowing that we have the strength and the power of God to get through anything and that what we have is to give power and joy and thanksgiving and gratitude and appreciation in every moment that we live because Nothing is guaranteed. So let go the sadness and what you thought you lost last year. And what you thought you lost last month. You know, know that the best is yet to come. And for many people, it's like, oh man, I lost my job. I, I, I think of this too shall pass when you hear all the stories about, oh, restaurant owners are upset because they're opening up and people are coming out now to eat and I can't get staff. And I smiled and I said, hmm, because they've had time to think about the quality of life and what they truly want. And we've had that time to be in the tunnels, to think, to breathe, to stop and reflect and know that we want more in life. And so big restaurant chains are offering more money, benefits, childcare, better hours for some people. And that's what people want. And I smiled and you know, you have some people saying, well, it's because of the um, government money they're giving them. And it's not just that. I, I laugh because I listen to Trevor Noah. Ew, I just started listening to him. He has a daily show. He is funny. And he was, he talked about the same thing. It's people want more from life now. You know, they ran the rat race of working every moment, every day, and not spending time with their family, not having enough. And I listened to one lady says, you know, I worked all these hours and I still barely had enough money to feed my children, pay for day daycare. And I didn't spend time with my family. So now is the time to move into a new normal. With the power of our words, we can claim what is ours to have. I like what Myrtle Fillmore, co-creator of the um, Unity Movement, said in her book, How to Let God Help You. She said, words are powerful tools of wonderment or destruction. So we have that powerful words to ox for what we truly want in our lives. She says, as we learn to use the power of the word, we discover that we no longer have to beg for what that which we think we need and that which satisfies our longing. We find that when we put away all that hinders us, we are led into our good. It is ours. God gives it to us. Believe in the power of God and all things are possible and that what was there will pass and rise up into the light. So I'll close before we go into meditation with these two um, Bible verses. One is 2 Corinthians 4, 7-9. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This is us. We have the power. And the last verse I'll share 
in my theme of this and this too shall pass is from John 16:33. I have told you these things so that in me you may find peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So thank you for listening to that and let's take a few moments in meditation. So I want you to take a breath in and out, in and out, in and out. And let this music uplift you as we move more fully into the light, the light of God, where all things are possible. This pass passes away. And we move forward into the light with a belief of good where we are more positive, optimistic, and loving. Breathe. The more overcoming power that we have within us, we triumphant over fear and doubt. Breathe in and out. And in this present moment, Experience happiness, harmony, fulfilling love, and rejoice in it. The, and this too shall pass as we step into the glory into the light, transformed, magnificent, and powerful children of God. Breathe in and out. Give thanks to God. Remain trusting. And let your experiences become happier, healthier, and more prosperous, and more joyful, and more harmonious. Amen. Affirm with me, this too shall pass. And as we close out today, I'm going to read a unity invocation. I haven't read it for a long time. I am the presence of pure being, emanating the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I am all that God is expressing at the point of me. As I express divine wisdom, all thoughts of mortal limitation have no power over me. I am the substance and the power of pure love, bringing into manifestation my world according to divine law. Amen. Well, namaste. Have a good holiday weekend here in Bermuda and Memorial Day in the United States. As I said, healing blessings out to all of you. And step into the light. Namaste. Namaste.